Get ready to watch the trippiest mind freak of a cartoon you've ever seen on Netflix this 420. The Midnight Gospel is a surreal acid trip from the minds of Pendleton Ward and Duncan Trussell, aka the creator of Adventure Time and the host of the Duncan Trussell Family Show podcast. Because this show hasn't aired yet, I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but obviously I'm already too obsessed with this show not to talk about it. I'm Winnie Van Lanningham, and today I'm reviewing The Midnight Gospel. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our super nerd sponsor of the day, Zachary Turner. Thanks to adventurers like them, Nerdwire gets to keep the lights on another week. Want to help us out by donating? Check out our Patreon in the description box and throw a few dollars our way. We'll reward you with special treats, behind the scenes looks, and more. Now on to Midnight Gospel! I'm going to be honest with you. Watching the trailer for this new series barely scratches the surface of how intense, emotionally deep, and brilliant this show can be. At first glance, it definitely looks like the stoner big brother of Adventure Time, but make no mistake, this show is definitely not for kids. Think more Rick and Morty or Bojack on acid and less Adventure Time. But unlike these shows, The Midnight Gospel is formatted in a completely unique way that I've never seen before. While each episode ultimately ties together and features characters and storylines made specifically for the cartoon, the audio of each episode is pulled from the Duncan Trussell Family Hour podcast. This means that every character on the show is based on a person in real life. Be it another comedian, spiritual expert, medical professional, people from Duncan's personal circle, and even a former convicted death row inmate. The podcast hosts a variety of guests from all walks of life but the topics tend to center around spirituality, Buddhism, drug trips, and heavier fare like the meaning of life and death. If you really want to spoil the show for yourself, all of these interviews are already available online, but I recommend going into the show blind and following up on the rest of the podcast episode later. Each episode is only 22 minutes long, but each podcast episode is an hour to an hour and a half, so there's plenty of material to follow up on when you finish watching the Netflix series. We'll talk a little bit more about the podcast and its guests later on, but for now, I'm going to give you a quick spoiler-free overview of the show. The Midnight Gospel follows a dude named Clancy who lives alone on a faraway planet. His only real source of entertainment is his universe simulator. And it pretty much is what it says on the tin. A supercomputer that manages millions of wacky virtual worlds. These simulated worlds cover anything and everything that human imagination can cook up, but they're not immune to collapsing in on themselves. It's established early on that a major thread of the series revolves around the fact that the worlds within Clancy's simulator have started to die off at an alarming rate. But I'll leave that mystery for you to unravel. Clancy's primary use for his US is to use it as a source of interviewees for his podcast, The Midnight Gospel. Each episode, he selects a new avatar and blasts off into the sim to record some sweet, sweet content. Clancy lives by his own rules, and his personal life is kind of a disaster, but Homeboy goes on tons of fun adventures and meets really cool characters along the way. The Universe Simulator is voiced by radio personality and voiceover artist Phil Hendry, who's shown off his skills in various roles on Rick and Morty and Futurama as well. This computer system is one of the few recurring characters in the series, besides Clancy's dog Charlotte, who has an infinite black hole in her stomach. So, when I started watching the show, I had no idea who some of the voices belonged to on my first watch through. When I realized who some of the characters, aka podcast guests were, I was pretty fascinated by the range of people types featured on the show. Duncan Trussell has interviewed everyone. Dr. Drew Pinsky, the addiction medicine specialist and former host of Celebrity Rehab and Loveline, Anne Lamott, one of my all-time favorite narrative nonfiction writers, Raghu Marcus, a spiritual advisor, Damian Eccles, one of the infamous West Memphis Three, who was convicted of murder in 1994, sentenced to death row, and released from prison in 2011, Trudy Goodman, an insight meditation instructor, and Caitlin Dowdy, a mortician and funeral home owner, just to name a few. I'm not going to give away all the surprise guests on the show, but trust me, they will all find ways to blow your mind, even if you've never heard of them before. Because each episode of The Midnight Gospel is shaped, animated, and sound engineered around a pre-recorded, unscripted episode of a podcast, the whole process is unlike anything I've ever seen a cartoon do. When Penn Ward first pitched the idea to animate the podcast to Trestle, he said, It's like we replaced the dialogue of Indiana Jones with podcast conversations. What I also find fascinating after reading and listening to countless interviews with Penn Ward about Adventure Time is how adamant he was that none of the episodes were specifically supposed to cater to stoners. In my personal opinion, this always felt like BS, because some episodes of Adventure Time were so trippy and stonery, there was no way that there weren't an allusion to drugs. Maybe none of the episodes Penn Ward worked on himself were about getting high, but come on. The Nightmare Juice in the finale was totally supposed to be DMT. 
The complete opposite is true of the Midnight Gospel. This is a show for stoners by stoners, and honestly, I have to say that this show is designed to be consumed while you're high. For starters, the visuals in each episode are so insane and out of this world mind-bogglingly vibrant that it has an almost yellow submarine quality to it. But each conversation sounds exactly like listening to two of your high friends contemplate the meaning of life. That doesn't mean you can't enjoy it straight, but it is clearly intended to guide you through a trip of your own. It does come out on 420 after all. That said, 420 is also Trussell's birthday, and as the series delves further and further into serious topics, it's clear that the premiere date has more meaning to it than just pandering to stoners. For you straight edges, I will say that if you're interested in spirituality, Eastern religion, and progressive ideologies, you'll find plenty to love about this without having to hit the dispensary. There's also some very fascinating historical nuggets dropped in on occasion by the expert guests, and one of my favorite aspects of the show is that it made me go, oh, wow, I never knew that. Due to the dense subject matter and intense animation in this series, I personally found it difficult to binge watch each episode back to back to back to back. I enjoyed each episode a lot more when I took the time to watch it, digest it, and talk about it with Chris and Brett, because when I was mainlining the show on my couch during quarantine, it kind of scrambled my mind. Besides, I was able to enjoy it so much more when I actually took the time to look up the guests and get lost in a Wikipedia k-hole on their background stories. But if this kind of subject matter is really up your alley, you might not need that cooldown space between episodes like I did. Okay, so next, we gots to talk about the animation, because I haven't seen anything this cool in a bajillion light years. I love that it sticks to the bright candy-coated color scheme of Adventure Time, but adds in a lot more body horror, gore, and surrealism. If you're a fan of some of the trippier AT episodes, you probably already love animator Jesse Moynihan's work. He's responsible for episodes like Too Young, Is That You, and The Mountain, which are three of my top 10 favorite trippy Adventure Time episodes, so you know you're in for some weird stuff with him as the art director for Midnight Gospel. But don't expect it to be exactly the same. Make no mistake, the art that he won Emmys for in Adventure Time was a lot more cutesy and wholesome. This is the kind of stuff that might give you nightmares, especially those freaky clown spider babies with too many legs. There are definitely some Cronenbergian nightmare similarities to Rick and Morty, but overall, the best way to describe it is like a child's animation dosed with a healthy splash of hallucinogenic drugs. You're gonna see some strange stuff, but it's gonna expand your mind. Also like Adventure Time, Midnight Gospel has some really great tunes. So far, nothing as profound as Everything Stays or as catchy as Making Bacon Pancakes, but the songs in TMG slap. Some of them kind of sound like they were mixed by your DJ friend from college, but like, in a good way. Others are more singer songwritery but with messed up lyrics that you really have to pay attention to. My personal favorite is the metal version of the Hearst song. You know the one. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out, the worms play pinnacle on your snout. That one, yeah. <laughs> So, should you watch The Midnight Gospel on 4 2020 Hells yeah! I really think you guys are gonna dig this show. It's smart, funny, and complete eye candy. Talk to me about your predictions for the show in the comments, like and subscribe to Nerdwire, and I'll be back next week to Spacecast Across the Universe.